Hey there, what's going on everybody? Thanks for joining us today on Cinema Recap. So today we're going to check out a 2019 horror flick called Eli, where a boy becomes trapped in a haunted house while undergoing a mysterious doctor's miraculous treatment for a rare new disease. Spoilers ahead. We are greeted with a boy approaching a window, longingly putting his hand on the glass. We then see him outside running forwards, seeing the blurred figures of what we can only assume are his family before him. But before he can reach him, he begins to cough, collapsing and screaming, his face turning a nasty red. Is that what hay fever looks like? So the boy wakes up abruptly, and we see that it was all a dream. A woman walks up to him and asks if he's okay. Are you okay? The young boy appears to be staying in the same room as his parents' room. His bed's on the floor with a protective tent. The boy, named Eli Miller, tells his mother Rose that he had the same dream. The same one where he thought he was cured. And Rose tells him that he will be cured. And that they'll need to take just one more drive. She promises. Eli suffers from a rare disease that causes severe allergic reactions to the outside, which forces him to live his whole life in a completely protected environment, unable to even touch his own family. Eli washes and brushes his teeth, spitting into a cup and putting it into a plastic bag for the doctors, I guess. He then takes his medication and drinks what we can only assume is sterilized water. Then he dresses, taking clothes from sealed bags. He puts on a literal hazmat suit before leaving the safety of his plastic tent. Outside the motel, his dad Paul is trying to pay, but his card is declined. Paul brings out the last of his funds in cash. It's not enough, so he's forced to hand over his watch as well. Nice work. Paul heads back to the room as the wife is packing their bags. As he walks outside, heading to his car, a group of men with a barking dog tease him for his appearance. What planet are you from, Uranus? And throwing firecrackers at his feet. Seriously, come on, it's just a kid. Startled by the firecracker, he trips and rips the knee of his suit, beginning to panic. His parents carry him to the car and he rests against it, as they seal the hole in his suit with duct tape. Already, Eli's face is turning red as he begins to gasp. Rose tries to distract him with memories of his birthday cake, and he begins to calm down. He tells his mom that he wished he could fight the men. I wish I could the crap out of them. Rose tells him to make another wish, and as you guessed it, he wishes to be cured. She kisses the plastic protector and helps him up. The men continue to mock him as he gets into the car, and the family drive away, but not before Dad reverses into that group nearly hitting him. So the family continue on their long drive. Paul's complaining as the car begins to make noises that sound expensive. The parents share banter before Paul tells Eli that he had to spend a lot to get him to the doctor. Rose says the doctor will be worth every penny, because she's a miracle worker. Eli turns, looks out the window before saying, I miss DC. They continue driving. Eli sees a girl sitting on a swing as they drive by a home. The car approaches a creepy looking manor house, the area surrounded by fog. Eli gazes up at the building, and the family get their bags and enter through the large, foreboding archway. There's no doorbell, but a surprisingly modern door carved with three simple crosses opens automatically. A voice on the intercom welcomes them, and it introduces itself as Dr. Horn. The decontamination chamber is our only way in or out. Eli's requested to enter first by himself, which he does, but only with the greatest reluctance. The door closes behind him and he's decontaminated before being allowed to enter the actual building. Three figures are waiting to greet him, Dr. Horn and two others standing a little off to the side. Moments later, the parents come in and the doctor greets him as well. The doctor introduces the women behind her, her nurses called Barbara and Maricela. While the adults are talking, Eli steps further into the hall, looking all around him at the old-fashioned and gorgeous style. The doctor approaches him, telling him, You can take your suit off now. You're safe. He's initially reluctant after living for so many years in a protected environment, but he's encouraged by his mom, who tells him that there's no contaminants in here and that the house is clean. The doctor's very understanding and says that there's no rush, and she tells her nurses to fetch the family's luggage. Dr. Horn leads the family to their room, while the two nurses walking away both stare back at Eli. Eli's attention lingers on these nurses before he speaks to the doctor, asking how long the treatment's going to take. The doctor says it'll be in three stages. Called viral gene therapy. Eli begins to quiz the doctor about how long she's been doctoring the house and if she's cured all of her patients. Funnily enough, she never actually answers that last question. Eli, I know you're nervous, but you don't need to be. They then hear a weird banging noise, but the doctor assures them that it's just the sound of the air filtration, going on to say that the house is 
very old. It's down there. Dr. Horn says not all parts of the house have been retrofitted to be a clean environment. But don't worry, because all the seals are airtight. And this will never change throughout the entire movie. No way. Oh my god, what was that? Eli's shown his room. A beautiful, spacious room with tons of lighting and a big bed. He gazes in bewilderment, spying his reflection briefly before slowly walking about the room. The doctor encourages him, telling him not to think of this place as a medical facility, but as a home. Eli asks if the water's safe. The doctor turns on the coolest looking shower head, explaining that the water is filtered and pure. Rose tells Eli that they can trust the doctor. Slowly begins to take off all his gear. Rose begins to help him, and Eli breathes freely for the first time. Finally able to touch his mom's hand since who knows how long ago. The two hug, a lot of emotions and stuff, and Rose tells her son that she loves him, as Eli smiles to his dad over her shoulder. That creepy night. Eli silently rejoices in what may well be his first ever shower. Meanwhile, his parents are talking in the room, Rose gushing over how happy Eli is, while Paul has other things on his mind. Rose is convinced this treatment will work, and that Eli will get better, and that they just need faith. Which Paul has or so he claims. Later, when Eli's in his new bed and not inside a tent, he lies there, unable to sleep, hearing the unfamiliar creaks and rumbles of this new house. He's hearing some clicking and pulls back the curtain, seeing a little bug beyond the glass. He then sees some fog on the glass, stepping back and staring at it. Something's breathing on that window. Rose wakes, seeing Eli standing beside her bed. He's still scared and shaken after what he just saw, and I'd be too. Eli asks, I'm gonna sleep in your bed tonight. and of course, being the loving, doting mom that she is, Rose accepts, shuffling back to give Eli space, and Eli says nothing about what he just saw. The next morning, Eli's quizzed by the doctor about how he slept last night, and Eli, for the first time, mentions that there was something in the room, but he doesn't know what it was. He's not sure if he was awake or dreaming, and the doctor chalks it up to bad dreams being the side effect of the immunosuppressants he's taken going on to say that some of the previous patients also had hallucinations, and that it's perfectly normal. Eli gives a temporary goodbye to his parents as he and the doctor go alone to the next room. Before he goes, Eli makes a wish, like he did before. He wishes to be brave, and his mom replies, You already are. He smiles and they part ways. Now Eli enters a scary looking hospital room, and is told by one of the nurses, rather coldly I might add, to stand there. His shirt's taken off and he's given a hospital gown to wear. And then, his picture's taken. Why are you taking my picture? Do you know what happened to the boy who asked many questions? The nurse walks away without answering. Dr. Horn appears behind her, all kitted out in doctor attire, and she ominously puts on rubber gloves, telling the nurses to get to their stations. Stations. And then Eli strapped onto the bed lying on his front. The doctor asks when this all started, and Eli replies about four years ago. About four years ago? Trigger warning for those who don't like needles, scalpels, and hospital operation-y stuff. You've been warned. She injects him with something as she's continuing to talk. Seriously, that needle goes like all the way in. Ugh. She continues talking to him, saying what she's about to do in the procedure. You know, science stuff. We then see the metallic reflection of the back of the chair, and we sense a jump scare is imminent. The doctor and nurses do their science stuff, and Dr. Horn is handed a scalpel, cutting his skin before asking for a... Bone punch? Bone punch? God. And now she wants this poor boy to count backwards from 100. I want you to count back from 100. So he begins counting, while Dr. Horn does... something we can't quite see. Whatever it is, she's using quite a bit of force. Eli continues counting, not for very long, as he passes out. But not before seeing an unsettling figure in that reflection of the metallic chair. It's hard to make out. Eli wakes up abruptly on another table, this time resting on his back. He's begging the doctor to let him go, saying that it burns. Dr. Horn, it burns! But the doctor replies simply that it's just the medication, and that the burning means it's working. God, I hate hospitals. He starts to scream as his skin begins to turn red and nasty. Now he's back in his room. He stands gingerly and begins to walk away, but stops abruptly when he hears a sound, a click of some sort. He slowly turns, moving towards the all-scary window, where he breathes his handprint on the glass. He finds the source of the tapping. It's a girl throwing pebbles at the window to get his attention. He goes down to meet her, and the two begin to talk. 
You say you're what, like allergic to the world, right? Eli talks a bit about his condition, and the girl introduces herself as Haley. He tells her that he likes car tricks. She lights her own hand on fire to show him her own trick. You scared of fire? He then asks her if she would like to come inside the house, but Haley replies. Okay. I don't mean to freak you out, but... Apparently there's something off about the whole place, and that gives her the creeps. Haley goes on to say that the woman who runs this place, Dr. Horn I presume, doesn't like her. She in turn doesn't like Dr. Horn, saying she's shifty. Haley then ominously says that it's better if Eli doesn't say anything. She then says her goodbyes before leaving. So he continues to wander the place alone, hearing more creaks and strange sounds. He shines his light into one of the darker sections of the house, the parts that are sealed off because they haven't been properly cleaned. Wait, what was that? The lights suddenly go out, and he turns to see the girl now standing in the same unsealed corridor as him. Well, she scares him and he falls back, unable to see her now, but when he turns, he sees her shadow. The image, however, quickly vanishes when his dad appears from behind the curtains, telling Eli he's not to be wandering the place alone. So later that night, Eli and his parents sit down for a meal. Rose says a prayer, thanking God before saying amen. She asks Eli if he's okay. Paul explains that he's upset because he yelled at him, and he won't put the drip back in his hand. Eli explains he saw someone in the hallway and that there's another patient. He's annoyed that neither of his parents believe him, as Rose brushes him off, saying the whole thing must have been overwhelming for him, and basically goes on to say that it's all in his head. Well, he's relenting, putting the drip back in his hand and beginning to eat the terrible food. Later that night when he's reading in bed, Eli hears a thud, and he gets up to investigate. He's attacked by a girl who's in the mirror and then is like outside the mirror. Moments later, we see it's actually Paul with Rose standing behind him. Eli continues to scream. When the doctor leaves the room sometime later, having calmed Eli, she explains that it's the medication. Rose asks if maybe the dosage can be lowered. Paul, in a hushed voice, tells Rose that they put everything on the line and that they should just let the doctor do her job. The doctor straight up says Eli's going to get worse before he gets better, and that stage two will be harder. Stage two begins shortly after this. Be strong, sweetheart. Alone in the room with the nurses, the doctor enters telling Eli that the good news is that the virus that was injected into him is curing the mutation that causes his body to attack itself. The treatment's working. Again, trigger warning for those squeamish people out there. The doctor then literally drills into his head as one of the other nurses speaks to him, telling him that everything's going to be all right. Outside, Rose continues to pray. Dr. Horn appears telling them that Eli had a bit of a reaction, but that it was common. Rose is told she can only see him once he had some rest. Now that night, Eli's arguing with his parents, saying that he doesn't trust the doctor and that he wants to leave, believing that she's making him sicker. And his dad goes for the reverse psychology card. You want to leave and stay sick forever, or do you want to stay here and get better? Now that night, Eli's woken up by that tap on his window, seeing Haley outside again. But before he's able to meet her, he sees the girl in his room again who attacks him like before. He runs into the cupboard, calling for his parents. When they reach the room with the doctor, the cupboard is tipped backwards, and there are words scratched into the wood. The next morning, he's interrogated about it, and Eli explains that the words don't read his name, but instead the word lie. Frustrated that no one believes him, he storms back upstairs. That night, he hears the tapping on the window again, and this time successfully manages to reach Haley. He tells her that he thinks the house is haunted, and Haley replies that the kid who stayed here before said the same thing. That's strange. The doctor specifically said that morning that none of her other patients have mentioned seeing ghosts. Huh. Weird. Haley then plants within Eli the seed of doubt. He said he was about to get procedure three, and that was the last time I saw him. You mean where Eli is now? Great. The lights begin to flicker and Eli tells Haley to wait there. He then wisely goes to investigate alone. He then gets dragged by an invisible force which appears to be the doctor and two nurses. Eli's dragged to the decontamination chamber at the entrance of the house, but before the door can fully open, he's dragged back. And as the doctor tends to him, Eli mentions the name of the previous patient, Perry, and accuses the doctor of being a liar, before swearing at his mother. He then cuts his hand on glass and faints. While well, he wakes up in bed, hearing the faint voice of the doctor talking to Paul, explaining that he's not accepting the treatment. Rose enters his room alone, offering Eli medication given to her by the doctor to help him sleep, which he accepts. And as Eli's hugging his mom, he sees the scratches on the cupboard. Now from another angle, he sees they're in fact numbers 317. 
Once his mom's gone, Eli spits out the pill, while elsewhere in the house, the doctor burns Eli's hazmat suit. Now that night, Eli grabs the light and inputs the code 317 into the door to the doctor's secret lab. He gets into the place. The doors close and lock behind him. He tries the first door, but it's locked. The second one? It opens. But here, he sees only Dr. Horn's sleeping figure in her bed. Eli closes the door quickly, moving elsewhere, and he continues to explore. He's going further into the rooms, opening up a filing cabinet, sifting through. And while back in the room, Rose is asking Paul what he and the doctor were talking about. He lets out a great sigh, sitting up and turning the light on. He speaks to her reluctantly, telling her plainly that there's a chance Eli might die during a procedure. Uh, the two begin to argue and Rose says, How dare you! Downstairs, the doctor hears all the commotion, leaves the room. Eli continues to investigate. He finds some secret files regarding the previous patients, and he learns that they have died. Outside, Rose is trying to leave, but the doctor tries to talk her out of it. Inside, Eli desperately tries to search for his mom. He's found by his dad instead, who tells him a story, a dream he had, of their old dog as a puppy chasing a ball in a meadow. You're scaring me. Paul tells Eli that he's loved by everyone, and that he's sorry for all that has happened, before giving him a hug and then injecting him with something. Well, Eli freaks out, screaming, trying to fight, but he's carried off by the nurses who take him downstairs. Behind the nurses, we see Rose. They hear a sound outside, seeing a burning car. Eli uses the opportunity to escape, biting one of the nurses to do so, and he runs to the office, trying to find those files, but they're gone. He runs to the doctor's room, barricading himself inside, and while the nurses try to find another way into the room, Eli sees a photo on the shelf. An insect lands on it, and guides Eli's attention to a secret passage. He enters this underground place, finding an altar. And now he's trapped in the room when the others find a way in and lock the gate. What are you doing? He wakes up sometime later, now able to breathe. Rose comes back and tells him that he was never allergic to the outside world. She tells him that he needs his last procedure, and then she'll explain everything to him. Well, he fake collapses and his mom opens the gate. He hits her over the head, knocking her out, and makes a break for it. Eli flees to the place where he met Haley several times. Paul and the others, hot on his tail. They're unable to reach him, however. Eli locked the door from the inside, and he begins to try to break the glass with a fire extinguisher, while Haley watches from the other side. Back in the underground room, Rose regains consciousness. Sitting up, she picks up the item Eli hit her with. A cross, with a secret hidden blade. She pushes the lid off the stone table in the middle of the room, revealing mummified bodies laying there. Eli is taken back into the room and strapped to the table. The procedure stopped, however, when Rose steps in, threatening everyone with the knife she found, ordering the nurses to get away from Eli. She says she saw the bodies. Paul tricks Rose into giving him the knife, before handing it to the doctor. Paul is holding her back as the doctor is explaining that the true sickness Eli suffers from is not the outside, but the inside and that she's been working with his parents for longer than he knows. She reads from the Bible, spraying him with holy water. The lights from above shatter. The doctor brings out the knife to stab him, but is stopped by an invisible force. The knife is turned on herself, and the doctor tries to resist, but fails and is stabbed. Eli is able to break from his straps, falling to the floor, eyes turning red, throwing everything in the room outwards. The doctor and the nurses try to escape, but Eli, using his new abilities, turns them around and orders them to watch. He lifts them in the air before setting them on fire. He demands that his mom tells him the truth, and Eli learns that his true father is actually the devil. Paul tries to stab him, but he's stopped, and Eli makes his face explode before advancing on Rose again. And she tells him she wanted a child so desperately that God wouldn't answer, so the devil did. Rose is asking her son for forgiveness, and Eli rips the cross from around her neck. Eli walks out of that room, leaving fire in his wake. The house behind him burns as he steps outside freely for the first time in ages. Behind him, Rose is standing, still alive. He spared her. Haley calls out to him, saying that she knew he was stronger than the others, his half-brothers and sisters that died before him. Eli learns that Haley is his half-sister, who offers him to meet their dad. Haley tells Rose to drive the car to go meet their dad, and Rose nervously begins to gasp. Eli tells her calmly to take slow breaths and make a wish. The three of them drive off together to meet the devil himself. Well, that was a random ending, but hey, what you gonna do? Netflix, right? Go ahead and let us know what you think. As always, till next time.